Here's something interesting, aluminum. Now, aluminum is relatively cheap and accessible. You can buy a whole roll of it at the grocery store. It's lightweight, pretty strong, and it's easily recyclable. We can form it into wires, sheets, cans, even bags. But for all its great qualities, if the Olympics gave out medals made of aluminum, you probably wouldn't be too impressed. But that's essentially what happened in 1884 when they decided to top the Washington Monument with a nine inch aluminum pyramid. <clears throat> yes? Are you just gonna ignore the aluminum elephant in the room? I mean, I looked into it and I didn't really think it was that interesting. Do we have to cover it? Well, I think we probably should. Okay, so basically there was this British scientist, Sir Humphrey Davy, yes, thank you. Davy discovered the metal, and he called it several different things, but before actually isolating the element, he referred to it as aluminum, following the example of potassium, sodium, barium, etc. Wait, that's yet another name. Exactly. Then a year later, he started calling it aluminae, and finally, aluminum. But at the same time, other scientists started using the word aluminium, and different groups used different names, and eventually aluminum became the preferred name in North America, and aluminium elsewhere. It's not really much different than, you know, lorry versus truck, or sneakers versus trainers, chips versus fries. So basically, language is weird, and different people call things different names. And since I'm in the United States, I'm going to call it aluminum. Good? Works for me. Great. So back to the Washington Monument. It was designed by Robert Mills, and construction began in 1848 on the monument to honor America's first president. The plan included a six pound cap of aluminum on the top, which is nearly nine inches tall, partly for practical purposes as part of the lightning protection system, but also to show off the power and wealth of America. You see, while aluminum is the third most common element and the most common metal in the Earth's crust, it's usually found in aluminum silicates like bauxite and cryolite. And in the 1800s, they didn't really know how to process it very well to get the aluminum out of the other elements. So stories from the time often sound ridiculous, like ladies and dignitaries wearing aluminum jewelry to events instead of gold, and Napoleon would wow visiting leaders by showing off his lavish aluminum plates and dinnerware, while the less important guests had to use the more common gold and silver dinnerware. And at the Paris Exposition of 1855, bars of aluminum were displayed as a precious metal. So aluminum was expensive and rare, with just a single ounce costing roughly what a worker on the monument made in a 10-hour day. The six-pound pyramid crafted to top the monument was the largest of its time, and was such a novelty that William Frischmuth, who did the casting, displayed it at Tiffany's Jewelry Store in New York City, before eventually sending it on to its final perch. In a telegram, Frischmuth said that thousands of people came to see the hunk of metal which was made of corundum from South Carolina and was 97.75% pure, which was pretty good by the standards of the time. On December 6th, 1884, the monument was completed with the capstone in place, and just two years later, Charles Martin Hall in Ohio and Paul Hurolt in France independently created a process to isolate the metal using a new invention called electricity. Their approach was to dissolve alumina in molten cryolite and run electricity through the mixture for several hours, separating out the aluminum from the less desirable elements. This process caused the price of aluminum to plummet from more than $10 per pound in 1880 to just 78 cents per pound by the mid-1890s. This hall herolt process, which is still in use today, paved the way for everything from soda cans to airplanes. In fact, when the Wright brothers wanted to create a lightweight engine for the Wright Flyer 1, they used an aluminum block. And now we have aluminum everywhere. Packaging, consumer goods, construction, long distance power lines, planes, trains, and automobiles, even the space shuttle. So at your next dinner party, put on your fanciest aluminum jewelry and get out your best aluminum china. And the next time you're in Washington, D.C., be sure to stop by the monument to honor our nation's first president and see if you can get a glimpse of the smaller one at its peak, the six pound monument to progress. And while we're on the topic of soda cans, the engineering behind these cans is quite interesting as well. So I'll leave a link in the description where you can go check out a video by the engineer guy that's very interesting and goes through all of the details about how that works. Sealed can 